So I got a request to talk about the wood anemones. And we're not sure if my grandmother planted them or my great grandmother. But this was the original drift of wood anemones here under these chestnut and beech trees. So you can see they get plenty of shade during the summer months. But they're a sweep of beautiful blue. And you can see they're just gorgeous. And what I'm gonna do is show you where I've walked around and transplanted them in other areas of woodland that we have here on the farm to spread the wood anemone's beauty across the farm. And it literally is a sea of blue. They're so gorgeous. And what I love about wood anemones as well is when night falls or it's very cloudy, their petals all close over so they go to sleep. So I'll show you some of my other, uh, our farm's other wood anemone plantations that I've spread to other locations. Isn't that right, Giddy? Look at this. All the cats love the she-wolf. Go up and cuddle up against her and she kind of ignores them to a degree. But where I've transplanted the wood anemone is also where I've transplanted a lot of snowdrops. So I'm spreading the snowdrops from where they were originally. So there were loads around here, as you can see, those are snowdrops. These are daffodils that actually have to be dug up and separated. They're not even producing a flower. So that's, I'll walk around and show all my, um, wood anemone plantations that I've been doing around the farm so you can see how they've been growing. And are you gonna come with me? Giddy, are you gonna come with me? Really? Or are you just gonna say that now? So here's one of the drifts that I transplanted, I spot transplanted a series of a blue wood anemone and they've kind of all kind of melded and come together. And, excuse me, Bear, I wanna walk around the wooden enemies. If you come across here, there's lots of bluebells, cow parsley, and you can see I've been spreading loads of snowdrops. These are all snowdrops. And these are bluebells, and then these are cow parsley. And over here, these are several plantations of, that I would just dig up a clump of wood anemones and transplant them from that main wooded area over to here. And you can see they're spreading. They're beautifully spreading. So I only have to do a tiny clump. I'll show you where I did a tiny clump this year. And this has probably taken 10 or more years. And you can see there's bees. Oh, it flew away. There were honeybees all kind of um, pollinating, but the dogs all walking by has disturbed the honeybees that were pollinating on the blue wood anemone. But, uh, and there's more wood anemone up here. You can see there. Oops, I'm gonna trip over a branch. So here's another plantation of wood anemone. Hey kitty, you beautiful boy. Has I've met Kitty. You can see here, beautiful kitty. There is a plantation. There's one I transplanted a year ago. These little, these blue one there, one there. Just trying to spread the wooden enemies across the wooded area. There you can see that was the bank of snowdrops earlier in the year, and I planted those about three years ago, I think. Was this their third year or their second year? Oh, I can't remember now. But always spreading uh, the wood anemone about in here, this area. Isn't that right, kitty? Beautiful wood anemone. You beautiful kitties. 
Okay, I'll show you where I transplanted some wood anemones in the woods, deeper into the woods than just around the house, which is what these plantations are just around the house. Oh, and there's one by this beech tree. Hold on, I'm gonna go down and do that. Isn't that right, kitty? This beech tree, you can see the wood anemone is spreading. I brought some down here, oh, could be about 10 years ago when I started planting the snowdrops. There was no, when I came home, there were no snowdrops here and no wood anemones. And this is about 20 years worth of snowdrops. And then um, the wood anemones, I think I only brought them down in the last five or six years to this location, but it's really lovely. It's just above the field of daffodils and it's on the driveway. So when visitors are coming up in the spring, slowly but surely I've been spreading the snowdrops and I want the wood anemones to do the same thing, to greet people. And there's a fine line between when the wood anemones show their beauty and then the cow parsley here, this is the cow parsley, will shoot up and cover this whole area. I love cow parsley season, it's glorious. But at the moment you can see when visitors come up the driveway, there's daffodils. You can see those wood anemones that I was just at um, just a few moments ago, or the first part of the film. And then there's, I'm gonna start planting wood anemone under there, because we've done a plantation of trees along there. But it greets the visitors with wonderful seasonal changes from the snowdrops and crocuses in early spring, then the wood anemone, and then the cow parsley. Oh, and the daffodils, of course. Okay, so we're in the woods here where I've been transplanting snowdrops, and there's more and more of them every year. We're adjacent to the field where the sheep are, so they're all calling. And this year, earlier in the season, I transplanted a few small batches of wooden, you can see the soil still disturbed, but this is one clump that I put down. Here are two clumps. They're right next to each other, so hopefully they'll flesh out at some stage that I put down here. Those are um, Jack in the Pulpit or Lords and Ladies. They're a wild flower. And here you can see there's loads of snowdrops that I transplanted this year as well. And here is a fourth wood anemone that is slightly getting drowned out by the, you can see this is the wood anemone, there and there and there. And then this is the cow parsley, which will take off. So those are one, two, three, and there's some other ones somewhere. I can't remember where I planted them, but they will come out over the years and if we walk up here, these are snowdrops that were transplanted two or three years ago. Here's bluebells. They're all gonna start coming up. And so someday I will transplant more wood anemone here. I don't, I love the sweep of it. So I don't want to ruin it. Oh no, what are you rolling in? No, no, no. Oh no, you're gonna stink of something stinky. Guys, really, do you have to? It's probably a fox did something there. Disgusting dogs, all of you. That's life on a farm with dogs. You can see I've got a lovely pile of kindling right there. But slowly but surely planting, transplanting this green area one day we'll have loads of blue, but it's all a slow process. Just do a little bit every year and ticks over and it becomes more and more like these snowdrops have been here for about four or five years and you can see they're filling out. And um, they're at the stage where they might even seed, drop some seeds. What happens is the snowdrop was fertilized by pollinators and this seed head will get heavier and heavier and heavier and then it will suddenly drop down here and either be, the seeds will either be eaten by wildlife or they will be, get onto the soil and start producing babies. There's a bigger, heavier one. 
and you can see how they are dipping down towards the soil away from the main plant. So this is the main plant and it's going out over here. So they potentially will have seeds over there and make more snowdrops. That's one of the ways they spread. And hopefully you can see these are all snowdrops. And there were none here. There were no snowdrops in this wood, oh, six years ago, I think. So slowly but surely, I'm filling it up with snowdrops and I'll be doing the same with wood anemone. I'll show you another area in the wood where more wood anemone are. And here's more wood anemone. These I planted over the years up here. You can see they're spreading out in a big way. I planted these, gosh, over 20 years ago at this stage from that main bed at the beginning of this video. This, by the way, is the Hedgehog Hotel. Hedgehogs live in here. Daffodils, these would have been planted by my grandfather. I haven't been transplanting any daffodils up here, just snowdrops and wood anemone. But if we come round here, This is one of my favorite cherry trees. It doesn't bear fruit, but it has beautiful flowers. There's another one as well. But if we go up here, this is well above the house in the woodland. And I've been transplanting bits of wood anemone and snowdrops up here over the years. And you can see soon it will be, they'll all meet. See, one year I planted a few up there, a few down here, a few over there, and then some over here. I concentrated on this woodland before I was doing under the beech tree or in that other bit of woodland where you just saw my small plantations or small transplantations this year. But um, it's wonderful, it's so rewarding. The first few years you're going like, when are you gonna start spreading? When are you gonna start spreading? And then all of a sudden, it's like they take off and spread like bilio, which is great fun. Here you can kind of see snowdrops. These I transplanted last year. That's a plantation of snowdrops from last year. The cow parsley is taking over. Here's another bit of the wood anemone plantation and you can see some are doing really well along here and then those ones not so well they're still they're still going and then look under here as well so they're spreading all over the place and that's to increase the biodiversity throughout the season when I came home this was undergrowth ivy brambles Brambles and ivy only feed pollinators and birds twice a year. When you have snowdrops, bluebells, cow parsley, wood anemone, uh, all these different plants throughout the seasons, you're consistently feeding the insects and the birds. And that's what biodiversity is about. And that's what I'm trying to do. It looks beautiful, but it's also environmentally functional. And I think Inca has found something. What have you found? What are you digging at? Is there a vole in there? Is there a vole? Obviously there's a vole. She's very protective of her hole where there's a vole. Those snowdrops along there, I planted those last year that Oven Mitt is now walking through. My recent plantation of snowdrops. And this year, I did, I planted some snowdrops up here. You can see here are a few from this year. And look at how these are now spreading on their own. They're leaping across spaces. There's nothing in there. Oh, this is um, ground elder. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it still feeds the insects. But when this whole place was ivy, oh, there's more. This was a plantation I did this year of... Um, transplanting of snowdrops here. They're coming really well. But when I um, 
was I going to say? Yeah, and the sheep grazed all the ivy off the ground. So when ivy grows all over the ground, it suppresses all these other plants that are coming back in. So, and celandine, that's the other wild thing here. Look at that. And I occasionally come up here. Where did I see it? I just saw a columbine. I saw a columbine. Uh, it's, occasionally I come up here and spread seeds. These aren't columbine. They look like columbine, but they're not columbine. I walked over it and I said, oh, I've got to talk about that. Anyway, these are our woods, which a lot of the winds recently have taken down a lot of the trees. So there's a lot of young beech, ash, and cherry growing up. You can still see the evidence of de-ivying that I did, the ivy that was here that over the last 20 years, I've slowly been eliminating. Isn't that right, kitty? You beautiful kitty. You can see there's still a bit of ivy, uh, but I still have the sheep come in. This year I didn't, or this last winter, but the sheep usually come in and graze once a year to keep control of the ivy and to maintain the biodiversity. And that's how sheep should be used. Isn't that right? You're such a kitty. Yes. And the dogs are all very excited about something. Particularly Inca.